Hello everyone and welcome to another JBNA webinar. I'm here with Travis White who's a VP of Products over at New Blue FX and he's going to give us a presentation uh, demo of their Tiling software product today. Um, and he's also, normally we uh, ask you to type in your questions for af after the presentation's over, but he's also offered that if you have questions during the demo or during the presentation um, and want some clarification or to ask about anything, go ahead and type that in and, and he'll do his best. We'll, we'll, we're going to kind of tag team on that and do our best to, um, you know, be able to respond to your questions in the moment. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Travis. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. And uh, I think at this point we want to get the screen going. So, uh, okay. yeah. Excellent. Okay. So go ahead and let me know when that comes into play there. Yep. You are good. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Travis White with New Blue Effects, and what we have is uh, demonstrating title or live broadcast today. And one thing I want to do is give first uh, some assessment questions. Actually, you know, uh, many of you are resellers, and your question is, how do I communicate to my end users to you know, find out if this solution is the right solution for them? And I obviously would say yes, but here's how you find that out. Uh, so uh, here, here's some assessment questions that can help you. In fact, uh, if any of you want to receive a document of these assessment questions and then the talking points that follow, please do shoot me an email. I'll just uh, say this right now. Uh, it can be at uh, Travis W at NewBlueInc.com. It's Travis White. And so uh, here we go. So assessment questions. Are you a current live text user? So uh, Tidler Live Broadcast works with new tech TriCasters. Uh, it also works with anything else that uses NDI or that receives HDMI. Uh, but a, a real target of ours is the TriCaster market. Um, and so uh, many TriCaster users might be using a live text situation, which would make a lot of sense. Um, if no, do you have uh, an animated live graphics package today. So that would be another question to ask. And uh, we'll go into talking points and answer these. The second one, can your TriCaster operator drive your graphics or does a graphics operator need to tend to the system? Uh, and that's getting to the point of if someone's sitting at the TriCaster itself, do they have power to drive the graphics or does it only have power on another graphics system uh, that's adjacent to the TriCaster? Uh, next one, <clears throat> what does your team look like? Are you a one-man show? Or is there a division of labor when it comes to graphics and data handling? Uh, we'll talk a bit about how the flexibility uh, is with uh, different ways of working with Tidal or Live Broadcast. And uh, are you involved in sports production? Uh, some uh, some uh, people are exclusively sports production. Some do it occasionally. We'll, we'll speak to what we have as an answer in that area. Do you find need to reuse your live graphics in a post-production edit? If so, how often? What is your current process of rebuilding those graphics? This really speaks to something that we've been hearing more and more and more, where uh, a broadcaster has done a show live, and then they find themselves wanting to repurpose that show for different mediums, different outlets, uh, maybe do a highlights, uh, something of that nature. And right now, many of the solutions require them to rebuild the graphics that were live uh, in a manual fashion. And uh, this speaks to that we not only have Tidler Live Broadcast for the broadcast market, but we also have a product called Tidler Pro, which is the same foundation of design that works in every post-production editor out there. Uh, so that would be Avid, Apple, Adobe, Grass Valley, uh, Resolve, uh, Blackmagic, and so um, that, there's a good interplay happening there. So I'll go on to the next slide here. And these would be the talking points to answer many of those things. So these are the things, uh, the messages to remember about Title or Live Broadcast. Uh, uh, I can say that we've <clears throat> actually run into a lot of kind of assumptions uh, uh, in the market because the market is familiar or used to 
certain price points, used to certain constraints. And so these bullets really kind of answer that this is a this is a new application with uh, the fresh capabilities. So for one, it's animated 3D on-air graphics. So especially to the live text customer set, uh, this is a big deal. It's animated. You can fly stuff in, you can twirl it in, bop it in, whatever you want to do. Um, and it's also 3D. Now you don't always need 3D design, uh, but when you do, it's there. In fact, every element in Title of Life broadcast is in a 3D space. So it's very easy to have something that looks 2D and just turn it a little bit and all of a sudden you have a 3D design. Second bullet is 16 streams of NDI uh, plus multiple graphic layers per stream. So uh, NDI has been a great uh, advancement that Nutex has uh, given to all of us and we're taking advantage of that. So uh, we can do up to 16 different streams of NDI uh, to a TriCaster or another device that receives NDI signal. Um, and in each one of those streams, you can have multiple graphic layers happening. So you can see how the workflows really start to open up. Uh, different streams can go to different machines. Multiple streams can go to one machine. And you could have multiple graphics that complement each other uh, all on one stream. And I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, the next one is New Tech Macro Control. So uh, this goes to the fact that if you're a one-man band or a small team, You've already prepared your graphics, but you want to get them on and get them off in an interesting way beyond the uh, typical transitions that the new tech TriCaster provides. Uh, we have a whole macro set where you can set up some very unique moves uh, and trigger them directly from the TriCaster, and it will talk through the network to Title of Life Broadcast and produce those animations and those titles. Uh, we also have sports and data integration. I'll get into that. Output flexibility. So that goes to the point of we have NDI as output. Uh, we do also have AirSend as output. AirSend is limited to two channels, uh, just because uh, of the specification. Uh, and we also have HDMI output. So let's say if you have a you know, roll in the switcher or something in your workflow, well, that's a possibility as well. Uh, it's live to post workflows. That's what I was speaking of before, uh, of taking a design from a live situation, taking that design right into a post edit with our Title of Pro product and um, accessible to use and affordable. So the accessible to use, I can't really bulletize for you all. I have to show you. And I hope that uh, through this presentation, you'll come to your own conclusion about that. But I feel pretty confident in that regard. So without further ado, let's show software. OK. So uh, right now, uh, I am on my laptop doing this presentation. And I want to point out that I have a window that I'm using with a remote uh, over to a tri here on the network. So um, when we look at this TriCaster window, that's actually on another machine. When we look at our product, Title of Live Broadcast, that's on this machine that I'm operating. Uh, so first off, I want to give you a survey of what the different UI components are. So this is one of two interfaces that we provide. This interface is called the Playout interface. It's the main interface. And what we have here is we have a library. In fact, if we could go into, let's say, main titles, and just hover over a title, you can see that you get a real-time animated preview of what this title might look like. So there's a number of categories of templates, lower thirds, bugs, you know, things like that, and great creative places to start. Of course, you can design your own. Uh, but this gives a sense of the variety of design that can be achieved. Uh, so here's your spark that you can get really gritty if you have a broadcast in that sense. Um, or super clean if you're doing some fashion event. So uh, these are really easy ways to drag and drop and apply. In fact, I can go ahead and do that right now. Let me drag and drop down into this particular playlist. Now, so that's the library. Uh, the playlists, I actually have three of them here. I have lower thirds dash net one, I labeled that myself. I have bug dash net two, I labeled that myself. And I have game, I labeled that. These are three distinct tabs. In fact, let me uh, delete that spectrum. Let me just make a new tab so you can see how this goes. I'm going to hit the plus sign. And now I have this new tab that, shoot, I'm going to call it new. And now I'm going to drag that design down that we spoke about. So here's a template that I'm working on. Uh, down here in the lower right, I have variables. 
uh, that are part of this design template. So I could go grab an image, let's say. Uh, let's go into some pictures and be self-promoting by using our new blue effects logo. And then let's say I can change the name. So JB and A training. And we can call this titler live broadcast. There we go. So here we have a template that we've modified. And uh, here is the playlist. And here's one graphic. So if we go, if we uh, get over this workspace here, you can see there's this green bounding that even after the template, I can resize and position. But I'll go over to the live monitor. This is the second view that we have. And uh, we have uh, four, view, four graphics now, one of them being or four previews of the channels, I should say. And this is one of them new. Now it's gray at the moment uh, because it's not yet hooked up to the TriCaster. So let's go over to the TriCaster. And let's go to input four. And let's click that. And now let's choose on the network this thing called new coming from Travis PC. So we'll click new, close. And uh, now let's go ahead and just use this third bit here. Let's switch from channel three to channel four. There we go. So actually, I now have a live stream read here. And so if we go ahead and hit play, you can see that the JBNA tra training has come up in this preview, red. That tally means that I'm live. If we go over to uh, the TriCaster, you can see that that's live right now. So let's do a little jigger here um, to see what's happening on the TriCaster. When I animate out, it animates out. I click it again, animates in, and I have that graphic animated in a unique fashion coming into the TriCaster. So there are the fundamentals of connecting a uh, a stream over to the TriCaster. Uh, I'll go now with a couple, let me switch this stream back over to three. There we go. And we'll walk a little bit through what is possible uh, in our interface here. In fact, I'll just keep this over to the side so we can really see what's going on there. Okay. Let's go back to uh, the lower net one. So what I'm going to do, we can see what these different graphics are. In fact, if I use control, this is the point where you have multiple graphics in one stream. And you can actually use control to do a multi-select and start operating with them as far as position and scale and get them into a complementary layout. So I have just messed up the complementary layout, but you'll see what's happening. And uh, let's say I could go with live with, with two, go live with three, uh, go live with four, uh, maybe go ahead and go live with one. And these are animating in an auto mode. You can see this, uh, we have the option of auto, auto in or take. Take would be a hard cut, obviously. Now we have this, uh, this mode is called a playlist mode. And it has this little arrow pointing down. And you notice that every time I hit another graphic, it kicked off the previous graphic to make room for the next graphic. Now, if I want all of these graphics to come in potentially at the same time, I can change each one of these graphics to be an independent or unlinked mode. So I'm clicking all four of these, and they have these little dots indicating that. Now, they will no longer kick off one another. They'll just, uh, I can click this next one and bring number two in. Click again, bring number three in. Click again, bring number four in. So you can see that you can get multiple graphics through one stream, all happening uh, going over to your, your broadcast, uh, your new tech. Now, there's another thing I can do, too. I'm currently in uh, just the, the auto mode, auto live mode. That means when I click something, it goes live instantly, just like that. Now I can change into a more deliberate mode. For example, if we go up to this button right here, auto live mode, I'm going to unclick it. So I've changed to something that has some very deliberate action buttons. 
and uh, the different states of my tool or of my graphics, I should say. These two buttons are identical. They just give you two opportunities to set up your two favorite actions. So, uh, for example, this one has auto, auto in, in out, and take. Take is a hard cut. Auto animates something in and animates something out. Auto in will uh, cut the last graphic out and animate the next one in. In slash out, when you click once, something goes out. When you click again, the next guy comes in. Uh, but then you have all the same choices over here in that second button, so you can just set up your two favorites. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the second and the third graphic. These uh, circles have now turned purple. That means they're listening. Uh, and what, what is that next action that you're going to do? So I am going to actually set this up to auto, and I'm going to click the auto button, and you'll notice the two graphics in the center, they fly out. And so I was able to set up multiple graphics ready to go and then hit one action, and that all happens. Um, I could also click the first and the fourth. Now they're listening to the next action. And I can select the second and the third. They're also listening. This time it's not purple. Purple means I'm live and I'm listening. Yellow means I'm not live and I'm listening. And now we could do the auto again. Actually, it doesn't need to take this time. We're going to get the first and the fourth to disappear and the second and the third to appear all in one click. Take. There you go. There it is over on, I have a little network slow down with TeamView here. But you can see them over here. So um, that is how multiple graphics can operate in one stream. We can go onto a second stream here. And uh, here the first one is a bug. Maybe I could bring in a bug. Uh, so we'll hit auto. And so our bug has animated in. Now here's a good place to uh, talk about uh, macros. So let's go back to our TriCaster here. And let's look at the macros uh, set up. So I can click, a, click right here, configure macros. And uh, here we have our macro controls right in the, in the TriCaster. And I have a number of macros that I've created. And one of them is called uh, bug in and bug out. So I can select that one and go ahead and hit play. And you can see that the bug has animated out. I can hit play again, and you see that it's animated in. Now to look at what that macro is all about, we can go into edit. And you can see that uh, it's a simple macro. Uh, you want to do the shortcut net to, and all of this is in our documentation of what these values are. The value is new blue. You want to talk to the title of the live broadcast product. Uh, then the key is NB dash in out. That means if it's in, take it out. If it's out, take it in. So that's the animation. And then what particular title do you want that to occur on? Well, that's the value here. NB dash TL colon bug. So if we go back to title of the live broadcast, you can see this particular title is named in the name column bug. And you can either edit it here or you can edit it up here. So uh, that's a way to animate uh, stuff in and out. And we can see also on a couple of these others, you can see some of this uh, graphic happening here and uh, some of the other designs. I think probably at this point is uh, going into what, what is it like to create a design. So uh, let's go to this new channel. And uh, we will right click and make a new graphic. And we'll go to this button right here that's called uh, Edit Title Design. And that brings us into our title designer interface. So I'll open this up a bit. And I'll give you a survey of what this is all about. So uh, down at the bottom, there's a timeline. Over at the left, there's attributes. There's also the identical library if you go into the project templates. And if you go to main titles, which we've been looking at, you can see that it's all the same design that you previously saw. Again, hovering over something will give you an instant preview uh, of what that's going to look like. So um, also over here is the attributes, and then your workspace and this timeline here. 
In fact, I have a starter template that has this fade in, and we'll see how that fade in is working. So if we click our drop down, we can see right here that we have this transition called fade in happening. In the transitions attribute area, we have these two different transitions, both, both fade ins. And maybe I wanted to ch uh, change it from applying to letter by letter to apply word by word. And um, so now we can scrub this and see enter comes in first and text comes in second. They happen a little too fast. So I'm going to reduce the time of overlap. One fades in, then the next fades in. So you can see how simple it is uh, to get that going. How you get a transition, in fact, I'll go ahead and delete these transitions, is I'll go to the library, and instead of doing the whole template, I'm going to go into the category called transitions. So I'll go in here and maybe go to the kinetic motion pack, maybe weightless, and I can preview what these animations might look like. Or maybe in the fluid motion pack, maybe some swinging text. So you can see that swinging text come into play. Uh, broad swing, more like a dog tail here. <laughs> Pinwheel letters, that's kind of fun. So I can double click or drag and drop down to the timeline or the workspace, doesn't matter. And now I've applied this transition to this piece of text. Now this piece of text, how do I want that to become a variable for later use? Well that's in the object tab, so attributes object. And there's this text variable here that I can check off. And I can label this thing anything I want. So I'll just call this name. And this is how, checking out with the text variable, this is how something becomes a text variable. Now let's say we have uh, some, some artwork that we already have, uh, either from our client or the, the station's been using certain raster artwork already. Uh, we can do something simple like a file, import image, and we could go into some of, some of the images we have. I'm going to rip off the Discovery Channel here. And Maybe we'll make this just kind of a bug over here in the corner. So we've got that. Let me size this up just so uh, it's easier to see. I won't, uh, won't sacrifice my design to, to aesthetic. I'll just keep it big and fat. Um, and then let's say let's put a temp, temp name in here. Uh, so we'll pick on Laura. How's that? So. Um, We'll justify this left because that's what we want to do. Size this down a bit. And maybe to bring these two elements together, we want a nice rectangle. So let's go down to the timeline. There's this add shape, add paragraph. We want to add a rectangle. Maybe size that up to about here. And now it's just white. We want to change this to be something interesting. Well, let's go to the second attribute tab, which is called style. So go to style, and right now it's the color white. We could pick a different color, but I'm going to do a gradient. So I'm going to radio button over to gradient, pick a swatch. Now I can work with this. In fact, I want the top to be black and the bottom to be just alpha. So click OK, and we'll drag this down to this point. Now it's on top of the other elements, so let's down here in the timeline, drag it to the bottom, and there you go. So now let's say I want to uh, bring in maybe a hard outline. So this is where we get into style layers. So the style tab actually is already one layer, and that's that gradient that I did. I can go ahead and hit the plus 3 there, plus 2D, and put on a different layer like an outline. So I'll put on an outline here, and let's just color pick blue. There we go. So Maybe that's a good design that we're going to work with here. So we'll do that. And now we want to animate these different elements in. We already have Laura coming in here, animating in. But we want the rectangle and the discovery to also animate in an interesting way. Well, let's, uh, let's go to discovery. And then we'll go to our library, transitions, and uh, maybe Wait, this could be interesting, but maybe something a little bit more basic. How about animated fly in? So 
fast left, following words. Yeah, that'll work. So double click, we've applied that. And the rectangle in the background, we want a different kind of animation. Uh, let's do library. I'm really making something beautiful here, aren't I? <laughs> uh, let's see. Fly in from, from infinity. Looks good. All right, so now we have this animation for all these come in. Now the timing is kind of wonky. We want Laura to start much later. So let's wait till everybody gets in for the most part. In fact, we'll do that. And then Laura will finally start later on in the timeline. There we go. So we can close this down and uh, let's go edit preview and we can click preview in. There we go. Preview out. I only worked on the lower bit so I think it will just cut out. And we have that one variable called uh, Laura Genoway. Now if we wanted to add a variable that maybe is an image, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to hit uh, edit title design again. Click on this Discovery Channel logo, and we'll go to the Style tab. And where that logo is placed, we actually have this checkbox called Variable. And we could name this Image. And uh, let's see, that looks pretty good. Close. Now we have this image variable in which I could go into some of my other images and say, shoot, we used the wrong discovery. Let's use the black one. Oh, no, it's not the black one. It should be the white one. There we go. So you can see that you have that opportunity just to change out that image. And so now over on the TriCaster, let's, let's, let's go live with this, shall we? Undo that one. So right here we have Genoa Live. And on the TriCaster, we need to get that graphic to go live there. And so we can animate it out. And we can animate it back in. And uh, now we have that happening over on the TriCaster. I think at this point, it was probably a good place to pause. I've covered a lot of ground. And I wanted to be able to take some questions uh, from people in attendance. Okay, I had to unmute myself there. Sorry, uh, this is Laura. Um, yeah, so a couple of things. One, um, I don't see any questions yet. So you guys um, type some type some questions in the little console there on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, I did upload a Tyler live broadcast brochure, a PDF, so you guys can download that as well. Um, yeah, so far, Travis, this is this is great. It's amazing, you know. And obviously, you're doing all this stuff, you know, so quickly. Um, it just really shows people what the potential is, and you know what they could really do when they're, you know, um, in the middle of a right, podcast, yeah. or you know, if they have even more time to devote to it than you know. Okay, exactly. here we go. I think the biggest, oh, okay, yes, go ahead. Oh. No, if you want to finish that, I've got a couple of questions coming in, but if you wanted to finish the, the Oh, yeah. I mean, kind thought. of what you bring up, Laura, is, um, is, is something that we actually run into. There's just, because of people's previous experiences, they just have this assumption that, oh, man, if I'm going animated or if I'm going 3D, um, there's just going to be this immense learning curve. I don't know if my team has time for that. I don't know where I'm going to hire an, a, a, you know, a graphics artist to make this stuff happen. I mean, there's mm -hmm. all those assumptions there, right? But right. um, hopefully I've just illustrated with my gorgeous <laughs> lower third um, <laughs> that, uh, that getting to a nice aesthetic quickly is really possible in Tyler Live Broadcast. And um, you don't have to get into keyframing, although it does keyframe if you want to geek out on that. Um, but just simply dragging and dropping these animated transitions and, and bringing in some assets and typing some text um, uh, is, is powerful. Yeah, for sure. Um, so a, a couple of questions here. Uh, this one hopefully will make sense to you. It's kind of brief. Live time and temp? 
lifetime and temp. Maybe that if that doesn't make sense to you, maybe they can clarify it, type type yeah. in a little bit more there. That same person is asking what kind of tutorials are available. Okay. Uh, so we have a number of videos that are available uh, on on newblueeffects.com, and some of the videos deal with the playout interface, which is you know this library preview, setting up your playlist. Uh, but many of the, the tutorials, just because it's a deeper world, uh, deal with the title designer interface. In fact, any tutorial also that's on our Titler Pro product, the one that I mentioned that works in video editors. Those are still very relevant on the design side because it's all the same design interface. So we have a number of videos um, that, um, as, as industry standards go, they're actually rather short and pithy, really kind of breaking down the experience in small chunks, digestible chunks. Okay, great. Uh, I've got another question. Does the output include IP as well as M NDI? Um, the, well, the, ND, the NDI is going through, uh, you know, network cables, basically IP. So it is, it's, it's really an IP story in that sense, if I'm understanding the question correctly. So um, these two computers um, that I'm working with, I just have a network cable and a, and a you know, switcher that I'm working with. So um, if, if I misunderstood the, the question, then, then the, the questioner can clarify. Mm hmm Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, sorry, I was just re reading uh, the person who asked that first question. Just gave a little more about what they were what they were wanting to know. So, um, live time from network time protocol and live temp from National Weather Service. Think the live morning show. Uh, live temp, the live time and temp are always in the corner. I guess they're asking right, about that. Uh, uh, That's a possibility. Like, um, yeah, so uh, that gets into an area that we want to expand title of live broadcast, and that is something that we're going to be calling input behaviors. In fact, um, I didn't go into the sports component yet, uh, but uh, up here on the top settings, input. Right now we have Scorebot. There's a there's a device called Sportscast uh, that will pull score scores from field scoreboards, and we want to expand the number of input devices that we have. And so what that would mean. Is that um, you know different weather services, clocks, you know world time uh, can be developed. Uh, right now, we're working on just to kind of spill the beans. <laughs> we're working on a data link as an input device. Uh, so so the you know, data link within TriCaster has a lot of useful information. And so we're going to have a data link input. So that means data from data link can be streamed into these graphic designs via the variables uh, that are chosen here. Um, and Datalink has a lot of pre-set pre up ones that we can use. Uh, we're also going to be pulling in from StatCrew. Uh, we're also going to be coming out with a generic XML input. So that means any customer that has a special XML document that they manage data with can be used. We're going to have an RSS feed input as well. And so this is definitely going to be growing over time. And um, a, a, face, a Facebook input and a Twitter input. Uh, so this is the right time, actually, to be receiving those requests. Uh, so uh, if, if uh, you have any specific requests of the kinds of services of data that you would like to pull from into your graphic design, um, definitely, we want to hear that. So again, you could email me at TravisW at NewBlueInc.com, and I'd love to begin those discussions. We want to know what you guys want to accomplish. Yeah. Um, somebody else is asking, uh, you know, the person asked the IP and the I question earlier. They mm -hmm. have, they're not actually using the, they haven't migrated over to NDI yet and they're still operating with the regular TriCaster. Um, okay. Thing. So they're using AirSend with their TriCaster. Okay. So um, in that case, uh, with AirSend, if I go up to settings right here and I go to device, right now I'm checked up with NDI, right? Well, I can switch over to AirSend, and when I do that, it means that I'll be using the AirSend protocol that they have today, and it will still be over a network cable, still be over IP. So, okay. um, yes, they can use Title of Live Broadcast with AirSend, which is the older format that TriCaster works with to get video over IP. Perfect. Okay. Um, is there external control with program programmable? Programmable X keys like keyboard devices. 
uh, if if they are connecting into the, I mean, the, the short answer is yes. Uh, but that would be on the TriCaster side. So if you set up macros and then you set those up to be working with your programmable devices, then you know, easy as pie at that point. You could have that programmable de device working through a TriCaster macro, send it, and that macro gets sent over uh, IP to us. We listen and we give back the graphic. So yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions yet, so that may be the end of it. I, I would, did want to ask you, uh, oh wait, so at this time no direct control from X keys? Not direct control from X keys into uh, X to, keys. To I mean, NBFX, oh new blue okay. FX. Okay. Well we have, we have our own shortcuts in, um, in, in that sense. Uh, so uh, if you want to configure, like I'm here on my laptop, and we have a number of shortcuts set up to do certain actions, like you know auto in or take or those kinds of things. Um, so you could take those shortcuts on the given machine that you're on and, and have X keys operate those as well. That'd be fine. Okay, gotcha. So one of the things that um, I know you brought up earlier is you know a lot of people are thinking. Uh, the you know the pricing may be prohibitive for their right. uh, end users. So could you talk a little bit about MSRP on this? Yes, definitely. So um, we recognize uh, that we are you know pushing for and coming into a market that has for a long time been familiar with what live text can do. And essentially, live text has been kind of the go-to solution for TriCasters, obviously. Um, and we know that a seat of live text, additional seat, is uh, a thousand bucks, nine hundred bucks, um, and that one seat gives you one stream. If you want a second seat or a second stream, excuse me, you buy another seat, and that's what the condition has been. And the other animated solutions uh, out in the world have been a little cost prohibitive. Uh, so uh, we have priced uh, Title of Live Broadcast to be very competitive, and also at a price point where we believe we're going to get some very good adoption very quickly. So the MSRP is fifteen hundred dollars. All right. Yes, that's definitely extremely reasonable, especially for what so it, it, you're able yeah. to do with this. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can think about you know a, um, a reseller selling a solution, selling TriCaster solutions into the situation, and it's kind of like saying, "Hey, do you want avocado with that?" Right. I mean, there's no reason you would say <laughs> no. Right? Oh, exactly. Exactly. So. I think it's a good, uh, you know, a good upsell uh, for for all the resellers. Perfect. Yes. Great. Well, um, I think I think we've uh, covered it. And uh, obviously, if questions come up, um, you know, Travis has generously offered you his contact information. Um, all of you know that you can reach out to your team at. JBNA as well, and they can, um, you know, help you run through all the different questions that you might have there. Um, we've got our solution tours going on around the country, so you can check out our website for a location near you if you haven't already been. Um, there's also New York. We have the NAB show New York uh, coming up in November. So lots of different options, different possibilities for you to connect and come look at some of the uh, ways that um, you know the Tyler live broadcast is actually working I believe um, I believe you guys are on the tour is that right Travis sorry <laughs> I know yeah, we've got new okay. tech we'll, out there. yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. true and we'll, we'll be at Burbank um, uh, coming up shortly yeah orange and then Burbank yeah it's all coming up super fast here at the end of the year um, <laughs> lots going on so um, yeah thank you so much go ahead and download that um, PDF as well before you guys uh, head out and tomorrow you'll receive a link with a recording so you can rewatch this or um, you know offer it to any of your colleagues there in the office that might have missed it so thank you so much, Travis. Is there anything you want to add? Uh, no, that's that's it, Laura. I really appreciate it. And um, again, just to get this back up on the screen, uh, we are very open for you know direct conversations with each one of you, and uh, we we can make it possible to do some uh, private you know screen shares to really uh, make sure that you understand what's what's possible with Tire Lab broadcasts and how to best communicate those to your customers. Uh, so very open for that. 
All right. Perfect. Thanks, Travis. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today.